Hi, everyone, and welcome. We're coming to you today for a special Ask the Expert webinar with Dr. Constance Chen. Today, we'll discuss the recent recall of certain textured breast implants after the increased link to a rare cancer called breast implant associated anaplastic large cell lymphoma, which moving forward, we will call breast implant associated ALCL to shorten it. Um, but before we dive in, let's welcome Dr. Chen. Dr. Constance Chen is a board certified plastic surgeon with special expertise in the use of innovative natural techniques for women undergoing breast reconstruction. Dr. Chen received her BA from Harvard College her MD from Stanford University School of Medicine, and her MPH from the Tulane School of Public Health and Tropical Medicine. After surgical residencies at the University of Washington Medical Center and New York Presbyterian Hospital, Cornell, Columbia, she completed fellowships at Memorial Sloan Kettering and New York University Langone Medical Center Institute of Reconstructive Plastic Surgery. Dr. Chen pioneered perforator slap breast reconstruction at Lenox Hill Hospital and is frequently invited to lecture nationally and internationally on new advancements in reconstruction, such as restoring sensation to breast after mastectomy. She's the author of three books, five book chapters, and 50 journal articles. She also won numerous awards for her work in plastic and reconstructive surgery at the local, regional, and national levels. Dr. Chen is committed to aesthetic restoration of the breast and body and enjoys helping her patients achieve overall well-being. At the end of the day, there is nothing more important to her than the joy she hopes to bring her patients' lives. So welcome, Dr. Chen. We're excited to be able to bring this information to all of you. Um, you know, you may have heard about this topic previously, but of course, in the last couple of weeks, there's been some additional news. Um, YSU's constituents and many breast cancer patients have probably heard about the FDA's recommendation to recall certain textured breast implants. And that recall happened due to an observed increase in the reported cases of breast, plant, breast implant associated ALCL after the use of those specific implants. So what we all want you to have is the information on what exactly that means, how common it is, um, and if you've had that, those implants, what are next steps, what questions you should ask your doctor. Um, so the first question I'll pose to Dr. Chen is, can you tell us exactly what is breast implant-associated anaplastic large cell lymphoma, and what are the textured implants that were most recently recalled? So breast implant associated anaplastic large cell lymphoma or BIA ALCL is a T cell lymphoma, a non-Hodgkin's lymphoma that is basically a cancer of the immune system. Look, many lymphomas are um, caused by inflammatory reactions and so it's basically an inflammatory reaction to the breast implant itself. 95% of the cases of BIA ALCL have been found in textured implants and only 5% in smooth implants. So for the most part, the concern is largely with textured implants. So most recently, the FDA has reported 573 cases of breast implant associated ALCL uh, worldwide. And of those 473 cases were textured implants made by Allergan. So a huge percentage were textured mm -hmm. implants uh, made by Allergan. And on top of that, we don't even know what the type of implant or the manufacturers for some of those implants. So it, it could be even higher. Um, therefore, Allergan voluntarily recalled their textured breast implants um, worldwide on July 24th of 2019. Mm. And how would somebody know if they received that specific implant or something? Once someone has had breast reconstruction with implants, their surgeon should have given them a card, letting them know what implant they have. I have found, I take out a lot of implants, so I have found that many people come and they either don't have their card, they lost it, they were never given it, or I have had quite a few people say they called their surgeon and um, they lost their records, they don't have them. Um, I know that's surprising, but it, it happens. Um, we definitely keep our records, but it's, it's just, um, People go to all sorts of places and, um, and people, different offices are in different states of organization. So if you are not able to find out what type of implant you have and you're concerned, um, 
First of all, know that AL, breast implant associated ALCL is very, very rare. Um, it's been on the radar of the FDA for a while. The first known cases are actually date back to the 90s. Um, but it didn't become a concern until about 2010, 2011, when um, the FDA noticed that there was a very slightly increased incidence in people with breast implants, whether for breast augmentation or breast reconstruction when compared to the normal population. And the statistics they were citing at that point was something like one in three million, and they started collecting data. Then in 2016, the World Health Organization renamed uh, anaplastic large cell lymphoma, breast implant associated anaplastic large cell lymphoma mm -hmm. because they thought, you know, it really does seem like there's an association. Mm -hmm. And the incidence went up to something like one in 3,800. Um, most recently, Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center has published numerous articles that have come out this year and last year where they have found that the incidence is probably closer to one in 443 women with textured breast implants. Mm -hmm. That's it. That still is only 0.25% of people with textured breast implants. The feeling is that, um, so how do you know if you have breast implant associated ALCL? Well, number one, 95% um, are in textured breast implants. So if you have smooth breast implants, while it's not impossible to have them, your likelihood is much lower. Most likely this is because the texturing of the implant. So it means that your breast implant has a rough surface causes more inflammation. Um, we've known for a long time that there may be a slightly higher bacteria count um, in mm -hmm. women with that. And so no one knows exactly why people develop breast implant associated uh, ALCL, but it's probably, it's almost certainly the inflammation, possibly the bacteria count. Um, it tends to it tends to develop about seven to nine or 10 years after the implants were placed. It's a very mm -hmm. slow um, developing indolent lymphoma that if it's caught early, um, removing the implant and the capsule completely is curative. So um, if you have early stage ALCL uh, or breast implant associated ALCL, a complete on block capsulectomy in which the implant and the capsule is completely removed in one piece that there are no known cases where early stage has a progressive advanced or advanced stage or death um, if you've had an on block capsulectomy. Sorry, I'm not mm -hmm. answering the question though. So, how do you know if you have not, um, if you don't know what type of implant you have? Well, usually it's going to present as fluid around the implant or a capsular mass. If you are worried, uh, generally, if you have breast implants after breast reconstruction and one breast has started to grow and you're not quite sure why, um, and it's just bigger than the other or it's painful or something has changed and it's not quite right, you can get an MRI or an ultrasound or some kind of breast imaging. MRI is the most sensitive. Um, mm -hmm. And look for fluid around the implant. If you have fluid around the implant that can be tested and sent to cytology, where the pathologists can test it for ALCL. They test it for CD30 markers, and if it's positive, then that's when they know you have ALCL. Um, if you have a capsular mass, that can also be biopsied, and that can be sent to pathology for ALCL. If you do have ALCL, then you definitely need to have your uh, implant and your capsule removed. I would mm -hmm. not just take out the implant. You really need to have the capsule removed as well. Right. So symptoms, as you mentioned, were our swelling, lump, um, or pain in the breast. And at that point, you know, if you see any of those symptoms, the individual is the recommendation to call their breast surgeon or their plastic surgeon. So if you know that you have allergan textured implants, but you're mm -hmm. not having any symptoms at all, the recommendation, the FDA recommendation right now is just not basically to, uh, yeah, not to run to take them out. Um, there are people who are concerned who just don't want them in them and that's fine for them, but the current FDA recommendation is if you're asymptomatic, in other words, you're not having any symptoms, you feel just fine, that um, you don't have to panic and you can just live your life and, mm -hmm. um, and go about your everyday life. That said, I do know that there are many people who are very worried and concerned 
um, particularly uh, people who are young or who have had prophylactic mastectomies and to avoid cancer, now they don't want to have any increased risk of cancer at all. But again, right. the risk is zero, what, the current risk is one in 443 women with textured breast implants, um, possibly developing breast implant associated ALCL. It's a slow growing disease. Right, and so the best recommendation is to, you know, if you do have any symptoms to talk to your doctor, you know, especially if you know you've had that, but, you know, as always, we, and I know you do too, advocate for if something seems different, you know, call your, call your doctor um, and inquire about that, especially if you have any symptoms, um, but as Dr. Chen mentioned, of course, um, it is rare cases, and I know some people have asked, is this something that happens right away? Like if I had, you know, these implants in the very recent future, or in the very recent past rather, um, is that something I would see, you know, the symptoms of swelling or pain or, you know, in the rare chance that it is developing into breast implant associated ALCL? And I believe you mentioned um, seven to nine years, is that correct, as an average? Yeah, I mean, you know, it can, it can occur more quickly, obviously, mm -hmm. like everything. I, you know, there have been cases where it happened after, you know, a couple years. And so everybody heals a little bit differently. Mm -hmm. um, that said, it really is um, if you're having symptoms to, uh, to investigate those symptoms. I think sometimes people hear recall and they think, oh, that means I shouldn't have this, you know. But in this sense, it's more that the recall means going forward that these implants won't be used um, and that, you know, in the meantime, it's really just about if you have any symptoms that come up to speak to your doctor about it. Is that oh, accurate? Yes. So frankly, the FDA for a long time has recommended that if you have silicone implants, you should be getting breast MRIs every two to three years anyway. Because if you have silicone breast implants and you have a rupture or a leak, this has nothing to do with breast implant associated ALCL is just a risk of breast implants in general. Um, the rupture is usually silent. So you're supposed to get a breast MRI every two or three years if you have silicone breast implants to monitor for a leak because a silicone uh, implant leak can, can cause problems for people. If you have mm -hmm. saline implants, it's very obvious if your implant has leaked because it will deflate and you'll look down and your breast will be smaller or gone. And so if that's the case, then um, if you have saline implants, you don't have to get a breast MRI every two or three years. It's only if you have silicone implants. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a good reminder is, as you said, it can sound scary when something's recalled, but those implants in general, are, especially the silicone implants that you mentioned, you know, the recommendation is always to be monitoring. So. Yes. Yes. It's, that's a good a reminder, I think. Yeah, that's a long-time recommendation. Yes, yes. Um, and I know you mentioned that for those who, in the off chance that ALCL does develop from breast implants, um, that often the treatment is to remove the implants um, and that most of the time it's caught very early and so that the long-term prognosis is very good. Um, are there any other treatments that sometimes come with that diagnosis besides the removal of the implant? Um, yes. So when someone has advanced stage breast implant associated ALCL, they may need chemotherapy and radiation therapy. I just took out um, and implanted someone who had breast implant associated ALCL. She had had an enlarged breast on one side for a long time and wanted her implants out 10 years ago, and she was told by her plastic surgeon and her oncologist not to worry about it. And um, now she has advanced stage ALCL, and she's going to need radiation therapy. I took out her implant and her capsule as one piece, but unfortunately it spread. And so, um, so it, this is something to take seriously. This is not, um, this is not sort of, a, um, this is a real disease. I'm not trying to scaremonger, but it is actually, um, I think the bigger concern, in my opinion, is I think for many years, people have written women off and told them not to worry, that this is not a real thing, um, or, 
uh, you're not having any problems. And right. uh, it breaks my heart when people come and they have been complaining about something for a long time and they've been written mm -hmm. off and no one has done anything about it. And then they end up with something that um, could have been addressed much earlier. Right. Yeah, and it is about, you know, we say this all the time to the YSC audience, and I know you do too as a, as a provider, Dr. Chen, is it's all about advocating for yourself if something seems off or if there's, you know, a feeling or a sensation or something that you know wasn't there before. Um, you know, you have every right to Absolutely. ask questions and follow up and go from there. Even if you've never had a breast implant and you, mm -hmm. you know, something seems off, Sometimes women are most in tune with their own bodies, and I would not um, allow yourself to get brushed off by a caregiver or friends or family. If you just feel that there's something wrong, um, you know, do what you need to do to put your mind at ease, because you only have one life to live, and you want to live it well and, and have a long life that's healthy and happy. Absolutely. And it's about finding, you know, your healthcare team too, who you feel comfortable with asking those questions and yes. advocating for. So um, we definitely, yeah, it's all, it's, a lot of it is just about knowing when something feels, feels off and, you know, feeling empowered to be able to ask those questions. So that is yes. great advice. Yes. If someone is diagnosed with ALCL and related to their breast implants, and or if they're just really feeling like, even if they don't have any symptoms or a diagnosis that they want those implants removed, what are some considerations or advice that we should be giving to those individuals? Well, as you mentioned earlier, breast implant associated ALCL is very rare. So I think people should remember that. It's, you know, again, even the most current statistics, which are higher than before, one in 443 women with textured breast implants, it's still only 0.25%. So, right. um, so the chances are you don't have breast implant associated ALCL. But that said, as you know, I can completely understand if someone just, any risk is low, is too much risk. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, when I spoke with the practitioners at Memorial Sloan Kettering who have been putting out these studies, they actually said the reason they think that the incidence is getting higher and higher is that nobody checks for it, which is definitely true. Right. Um, so, so I think this is still an ongoing area of research and study. Um, but that said, your question as to if someone wants their breast implants out despite not having any symptoms, um, I would find a plastic surgeon that you feel comfortable with who can remove the implant. Um, if you have the breast implant associated anaplastic large cell lymphoma, you need the implant out with a capsule as one piece. Uh, that's the only way you can guarantee the best possible outcome. If you do not have breast implant associated ALCL, um, you really can just remove the breast implant, especially if you have a thin, filmy capsule. Um, mm. I say that because many, the vast majority of breast, uh, sorry, plastic surgeons do not remove the capsule when they remove the implant. So it may be yeah. difficult for you to find someone that will remove the capsule with the breast implant. Um, so that's just something to know. Uh, there's a lot of uh, discussion and, and controversy about how important it is to remove the capsule. Um, all I can say is if you have breast implant associated ALCL, the capsule needs to come out with sure. it. If you don't, it's less important. I know that there are many women who I see who want it out anyway, and that's fine. I mean, I always do unblock capsulectomy, but I just don't want people to panic if um, they can't find somebody who does that. Right. If you have a thin, so capsules come in all different, I mean, I could go on about this for hours. <laughs> capsules um, come in all different um, shapes, thicknesses, all sorts of things. So if you have soft breasts, thin filmy capsules, um, it's quite possible that those capsules will be resorbed by the body or thin out and not cause a problem. If you have a thickened capsule, 
that and you have bad capsular contracture. I've seen capsules that are almost a centimeter thick and they have mm. um, calcifications. It looks like you have rock or clay inside your body. Those capsules really should come out and you should not allow someone to just remove your implant and leave that capsule behind because there's obviously something, um, your symptoms will not get better if you have any symptoms and I would not leave a calcified capsule in somebody's body. It's not, it's not going to serve you well. Um, so, you know, I think at the end of the day, the important thing is to go to your surgeon and talk to them about it. Um, we could do a whole nother webinar just on capsules and breast implants. It's, uh, but, um, but suffice it to say that if you have breast implant associated ALCL, uh, you should have an en bloc capsulectomy. If you don't mm -hmm. have breast implant associated ALCL, uh, you, the FDA currently does not recommend uh, getting your implant out if you don't have symptoms. If you want to have your implants out anyway, then, um, then there's a lot of discussion about whether you need to get it out with or without the capsule. And mm -hmm. have a hard capsule, I think it should come out with the capsule. If you have a soft capsule, it's probably not quite as urgent. Right. Yeah, and in those meetings with, um, you know, if you are having your implant removed for either of those reasons, either with or without a diagnosis of the associated ALCL, they, the surgeon will certainly talk over with you, you know, side effects, pros, cons, you know, of all those different things, um, you know, obviously there's anesthesia involved, correct? And so, um, you know, things like that, just things you may already know from your initial reconstruction, um, but just that type of information as well. Um, and of course, as anything, you know, you have questions and have those answered too. Um, oh, yeah, that's, that's, that's absolutely true. Surgery itself is risky. I mean, any type of surgery, there's not, um, I think people have this misconception that, oh, they're routine surgeries, you don't have to worry about anything. Um, surgery involves being, patients hate when I say this, but it is an assault on the body. It's, um, mm -hmm. into, it's trauma to the body. As you pointed out, it involves anesthesia, but um, it's under controlled conditions and it's under sterile conditions. Right. Your skin is your biggest organ and it protects the, your body from the outside world and organisms and things like that. So um, people will sometimes come to me and say, I'm here for my 10 year implant change. And frankly, if they're not having any problems and they just want new implants, I, if they have silicone implants, I'll send them for a breast MRI. If there's no leaks or any problems. I don't advise having sort of prophylactic routine um, breast implant changes if mm. you're not having any problems because you can invite problems just by having surgery. If you want your implants out just because you feel uncomfortable having a breast implant at all, that is certainly your right not to have breast implants. And so you can decide to go flat, you can have natural tissue reconstruction, um, you have a lot of options, but, um, but I think if you're just coming to have them switched out and you're not having any symptoms whatsoever, um, just just think about whether or not you want surgery at all. If you have allergan textured implants and you want to switch to smooth implants, fair enough that you know you can you can do that. But if you're just switching from say smooth saline implants to new smooth saline implants because you've re uh, reached a artificial ten year time frame, um, mm -hmm. many people think that implants need to be changed at ten years. That's not necessarily the case. It's not like milk that expires. Yes, it's a foreign body and they can degrade over time, but um, honestly, if you're not having problems, surgery itself can pose a risk to you. So just, I would think carefully about having surgery if it's not necessary. Right, no, that's good advice. Um, this was really great information. Dr. Chen, is there anything else you want our audience to know? Um, obviously, when things are in the news, it brings up questions, even when it's been in the news previously, um, but with the recent recall, I know we've gotten a lot of questions from our audience, um, and so we just felt this was really important to share that information and to use you and your expertise. So before we close out, is there anything else you want our audience to know um, before we sign off? 
Well, um, let me see. There have been so many questions about breast implant associated ALCL, like I said, um, when our office has been giving out information about it for 10 years or so. And um, at the beginning, we thought it was a theoretical risk and we weren't sure it was even real. More recently, as it um, was renamed by the World Health Organization, Breast Implant Associated ALCL, it was like, oh, well, I guess they have found a small association. I have, I have to say I've been, um, over the last year, it's been fairly shocking that um, it's not only uh, real, but I mean, I have a colleague at Sloan Kettering who has had eight cases himself in the last few months. Mm. And so it's, it's, it's something that um, I think it's important that YSC is doing a webinar on this subject. Um, if you do have anything that you feel is funny with your implants, whether it's pain or discomfort, or um, particularly if one breast seems like it's growing and getting, is getting bigger than the other breast, please see your surgeon and get breast imaging. If your surgeon writes it off and says, don't worry about it, find somebody who will pay attention to you and get breast imaging make sure you do not have fluid around your breast implant. And if you do have fluid, get it biopsied. Make sure that it's sent to cytology. Not every pathology department at this point um, knows how to test for ALCL because it mm -hmm. really is something that people are not familiar with at all, even doctors. Um, and they need to test for CD30 markers if you have fluid around your implants. If you if you do have ALCL um, and it's caught early, do not panic. Get your implants out with a capsule in one piece. Um, and because nobody has uh, gone on to advanced disease at this point who has, who has had that treatment. So if it's caught early, just get treated and you'll be fine. Great, no, that's great advice and a great summary um, of what we talked about today. And we hope that all of you watching got some great information. Um, if you have any questions after watching this, feel free to leave it in the comments and we will do our best to get you some answers and make sure everybody feels well informed um, and that you know how this news impacts you, especially if you did also receive textured implants um, as part of your reconstruction. So thank you, Dr. Chen, so much for taking the time to chat with us. And we hope everyone has a good day. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Bye. Bye.